I always keep getting asked one question. How to process portraits in Lightroom? Is Lightroom strong enough for any portrait post-processing? And my answer is always yes. Welcome to Exploring Light and I am Jasri Broy. You know, today I'm going to take up one portrait post-processing or I can say dramatic portrait post-processing using Lightroom. So as you can see, I have opened one uh, portrait um, in Lightroom. So this is one of the most simple portraits that one can ever click. I can always, uh, I can easily say that this is the best example of some kind of an urban portrait. Um, a very ordinary looking face and uh, it has very industrial look to it. Uh, his features are as if uh, belonging to an industrial worker or something like that. So my entire process is going to be revolving around creating, giving him that look of being um, um, an industrial worker. So though it is very simple, let me show you in simple steps how we can start enhancing this uh, portrait into dramatic portrait. So uh, the first thing that, that you should do is to, uh, to do the exposure setting right, though this image is, uh, there's no problem with the exposure, but still for your understanding, let me slightly enhance it, slightly brighten it. So the idea here is that you should not be looking at the, the kind of uh, these readings uh, of each step that I take. Uh, it will depend upon the image that you are um, processing here. So the first step is correcting the exposure. Now the entire workflow will depend upon what I really want to achieve. So next is I'm going to really change the temperature. Um, to uh, the idea is to add little more blue to the um, entire portrait and uh, with some greenish tint for individual look that I am trying to give. So uh, let me start with the with the temperature. Let me add little blues to it. Um, so I'll probably go almost um, yeah little more blue has been added. And uh, I will also add little greenish tint to it. So very slight greenish tint has been added. Now I will increase the, uh, the clarity because um, I really want to add more contrast between light and dark areas. So um, here's the clarity. So I'm taking it up to almost taking it beyond uh, what is what people might like as permissible, but I'm still taking um, it really at a very high level. Uh, okay, so now um, again, I will uh, bring up the exposure slightly up because uh, I want to sh open up these um, shadows that you see somewhere here. So I really want to very slightly going up, uh, not very much almost yeah so i think i think this looks fine as per my understanding and uh, now um, i i also notice that highlights really don't look really white uh, so what we can do is i will work on the tone curve panel and increase the highlights slightly so let me work on the tone curve panel and increase the highlights slightly so that this area looks little more brighter than other areas because the light is is falling on that and um, uh, okay now i think it looks perfectly fine to me now the next will be again i will probably go back to the basics panel and um, i will bring down the blacks uh, bring down the blacks that means I will bring it to negative almost uh, I think I am okay with this I am okay with this and uh, uh, now um, why, why did I add that because now uh, 
I have added little more contrast by adding black. I have added little more contrast to the image. The image is looking uh, contrasty and very nice. It is already getting that look of the industrial worker, uh, which is actually that means that I am moving in the right direction. So um, now I will increase the whites slightly. Um, so whites, um, I'll add whites slightly to almost let us say. Uh, I think this is uh, this is all right. This is uh, this is working fine, right? This is working fine. Now um, I'll have to open up the shadows uh, to get details here. So um, what I'll do is I'll work on the shadows and open up the shadows. Uh, I'll keep an eye on the this area, this particular area. So this was. This was initial. So if I'm opening up the shadows, I think yes. Now we can see all the details in the shadows as well. No issues there. Now I'll go to the saturation panel. Um, so I'll go to um, HSL hue uh, saturation and uh, luminance. Um, I'll go to that and probably see the idea here is to change the skin tones. So I'm going to first reduce the reds. You see a lot of reds are here. So uh, that is what I'm, I'm going to reduce. So I'm going to um, in saturation, I'm going to reduce the reds uh, almost to let us say. Uh, all right, this is this is good enough. And uh, uh, and to make it little colder and little more interesting on the face, I am going to probably uh, a little more of red. Yes. So what I've done actually is by reducing this red, I have made it. I've given it kind of the colder kind of the look. Uh, on his face. Now I'll go back to pa basic panel. Um, next step, I'm going back to basic panel and uh, I'll reduce the saturation because I really want to change the skin tones. So uh, I'll reduce the uh, saturation overall. So first thing I'll do is to reduce the vibrance here. So vibrance will go slightly down. I think this is fine. And uh, then I'll bring down the saturation to quite substantially here because I want to give it a faded kind of rundown look on his face. So I think this is I think this is okay. So there are no dominating colors on his face or on his clothes as well. Um, now the portrait looks very very subdued in colors. And uh, I will add some specific colors to uh, from the color palette to really to bring out some parts on the face and make it look dominating. So what I'll do is I'll go to the split toning uh, to add uh, specific colors and I'll increase the saturation here um, almost to going up to almost going up to plus I think this is this is okay uh, so you see the the um, entire look is changing and change I'll, and I also do uh, make the changes in hue so that it almost looks like um, the skin tone or maybe even yellower so I'll take it to almost uh, if I do it here, then it is almost like the skin tone. I'll go further here and add little more yellowish skin tone. Uh, I think this is this is nice. Okay, now uh, the idea is to go back to uh, start increasing the uh, details on the face. So I'll go to the detail panel here and uh, increase the sharpness. Now what I want to do here is increase the sharpness amount uh, almost to way up to I'll go all the way up to 150 so all the way I'm increasing the sharpness amount sharpening amount uh, to the extreme and uh, because it, it actually suits the hard look on his face in, in this image so that is working fine and uh, uh, so what I'll do now is 
uh, I think it is looking very well. It is shaping up very well. So what I'll do is I'll go to the effects panel. And in this um, effect panel, I would want to darken the edges so that um, uh, by adding vignetting and so that the entire focus remains on face and goes away from these bright white areas. So, uh, so what I'll do is I'll change the, so I'll um, increase the post crop vignetting. Um, let's see, so minus, I think, you see when I'm moving the slider, you see what's happening to the uh, white background here. So I am taking it to almost, um, let me take this right now and stop here at almost minus 14 or minus uh, 15. And now I will move the midpoint um, so that this entire effect starts moving towards the face. So I will move the midpoint uh, to almost, uh, you see what is happening? You see, let me take it to the extreme. So you see on the face, the effect is moving. So I am taking it up to almost uh, 35 or, or something like that. So that um, it is trying to move into, the vignetting is trying to move into the face. And um, now again, I'll go back to um, detail panel. And uh, um, now I think I will stay back here and probably because detail is already too much. I don't, really don't want to uh, tweak further onto it. Uh, otherwise, it will start looking very, very unnatural. Um, so uh, what I'll do is I'll go to the basic panel again. And now I'll have to work on the eyes. You see, everything seems to be looking decent, but the eyes are still not working. They are not going well with the entire look of the face. So I am going to zoom into the eyes here and uh, I will use the adjustment brush tool. All right. So um, this is the adjustment brush tool, which I'm going to use. And uh, um, I'll, I'll uh, br the idea is to bring the brightness and saturation in the eyes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, so the, I'm going to add the mask, paint the mask onto the dark portions of the eye. So let me just paint brush over it. You see here, this I've done. So what I'll do here is I've already painted um, onto the eyeballs and I am going to increase the exposure. So you see it will be very selective increase of exposure here. So I will take it to what I feel is going to be right. Let us say, I think this is looking fine almost. Yeah, this is this is looking perfect. And uh, now I'll also bring the saturation up. Um, so let me see, I'll increase the saturation up almost to, let us say, all my, yeah, this looks fine. Um, I think it is looking nice. The only thing that I want to do here is that when I created, when I painted in the eye, it has spilled over to the white portion of the eye. So I just need to correct that. So I'm just going to erase it slightly from here. You see here and from where it was spilling over. So I think it is looking decent. Let me do the exposure part slightly more. I think yes. And uh, saturation also slightly more. I think this looks perfect to me now. And uh, um, let me see how does it look. This is looking, okay, now this is spilling over here, right? So I will need to correct this as well. So you have to be very, very careful when you are painting in the eyes because it should not spill over. So uh, if it is spilling over and if you're not certain whether it has spilled over, you need to just toggle this switch to figure out where all it is spilling over. It is still spilling over here. So I'm still going to paint it in this area. Let, let me see here. Yes, it is looking perfect now. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to um, go back to the effects panel and increase the vignetting. Let me 
let me see so let me look back again it is looking little wide I, I need to increase the vignetting again and probably this time I will take the amount to let us say all right I think this is going too much 33 I think this looks uh, around yeah so this looks fine to me this looks fine to me and um, I think I think we are through probably this portion so you have to be keeping in mind whether this portion is uh, whatever portion on the face is working or not I think this portion is not working because it is invading too much into the neck area so probably I will move the midpoint back so let me see um, if I'm moving it back you see it is opening up now so I think this is looking much better now so um, all right so let, let's now compare I think we are done uh, let's now compare what was original and what it is looking now so this is what was original this is what it is looking now so I think um, I have we have been able to transform this image from something which is ordinary or mundane to really dramatic and industrial look so as you can see that Lightroom is very powerful and if we know what we want to achieve lot of things are possible it has its own limitations I, I am not disagreeing with that but if you know what you want to achieve and you, you want to use only Lightroom then we have the solution right here now many of you might not like the kind of look that I have created the idea is to show that what you can do that was my idea of creating one dramatic portrait one more disclaimer here that if you choose all the values that I have chosen on your image your image might still not look good or it might even turn bad because these are not fixed values these were done to give the look that I wanted to give to the portrait you will have to create your workaround your workway and use the values which suit your kind of image but at least now you know the kind of workflow that I am moving uh, to and fro between the panels and doing different settings into the image I do hope that you like this video thank you so much for staying with us for so long and going through this entire process of transforming an image into an ordinary image into a dramatic portrait image if you really like our content if you really want us to keep creating wonderful videos for you do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon next to it do like comment and share because sharing is caring until next time keep creating wonderful videos sorry images Ex keep exploring light and keep inspiring us with your wonderful images Bye.